Hello and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today, I'm clearly not unboxing anything. Today, I'm simply drilling down into the core reason of me establishing this unboxing channel. And it was to share some of the things that I was really, really passionate about. To share some of the things that I got to touch every day that you didn't necessarily get to see in real life or really just were interested in as a, as a passing sort of thing. Well, today I'm celebrating 25 years in the industry. And with that, we're looking at some of the things that really have inspired me more than everything else. And one of them, weirdly, is a subwoofer from Paradigm. Paradigm Seismic 110 subwoofer. Now this thing is an absolute brute. It's a mongrel of a subwoofer. It's this tiny little thing that in many respects you're like, oh, it's cute. What does it do? This thing rattles your neighbor's teeth from your place. That's how big it sounds. It uses 850 watt power amplifier that peaks at over 1700 watts. Its frequency response is down to about 18 hertz. And this is all from a little 10 inch driver. In fact, I was so, it, it, this thing, this, the, the, the model itself has been available for so long that, you know, back here when I was looking much younger, is an unboxing video for it. It's awesome. It uses a reverse annulus, which was some of the first emerging technologies for subwoofer uh, surrounds and annuluses. It used a polymer drive unit for the woofer. Um, big feet to try and stop it from rattling and vibrating the surface that it's on. I mean, the damn thing is really, really, really heavy, okay? It's not very deep. I mean, it's hugely well built. Huge amplification on board. What made some of this works so well, and things that have been tweaked now that we see the design principles, at least anyway, in some of Paradigm's most expensive floor standing speakers, is a dual voice coil approach. You see, when you've got something moving air, I mean really moving air a lot, like look at that excursion, it's got to be more than a plus or minus an inch, it's a huge amount of air. Uh, when you've got it moving that amount, um, the voice coil, the, the, you know, you've got a magnet, you've got the voice coil that produces the, the movement, you know, electrical energy converted into movement. Um, when, of course, it's all the way out from its excursion or its movement, less of the voice coil is inside the magnetic field. But by having two voice coils working in parallel, you end up with it dragging in more new voice coil as it pushes the old voice coil out. It's a really amazing principle, and to have seen this implemented in such a cost-effective subwoofer was, must have been a world first. Certainly it was for me. Its performance was so good, I ended up buying one. I still own it. I'm stunned by it every time. Uh, it rattles away nicely. It ticks over nicely as well, which is just superb. I mean, sure, 850 watts is going to start you know, doing well, but the second element of it is how simple it is to get the most out of it. So the basic setup at the back, you've got, uh, look, that's just basically a volume control subwoofer level. Frequency, it's always going to try and do its lowest frequency. So, so the frequency cutoff is actually uh, influencing the top frequency that tr it starts to bleed in. And then we've got the ability to adjust the phase. Now, unique to most in its price was the ability to have an infinitely variable phase. Um, conceptually, the placement of a subwoofer is going to influence um, the distance from the subwoofer to you and potential noding or other phase related issues as low frequencies bounce around a room where you can infinitely vary that and hit a little sweet spot which uh, most weren't able to achieve because they often would have an in or out of phase switch depending on where it might be placed. Um, line in both uh, LFE, left and right stereo, so you can send it a stereo feed if you want, or an LFE feed from your theatre amplifier. And again, unique in its price, certainly in its time, is a fully balanced subwoofer output in an XLR plug. There's a 12 volt trigger, although that will actually handle between 5 and 25 volts, so basically anything to power it on and keep it on. And a really comprehensive standby circuit as well. Now over here we've got a USB. 
Now, that's not for soft or anything like that. This is for uh, Paradigm's ARC, or um, room correction, essentially. Weirdly, you used to borrow a PBK kit, which was a perfect base kit, kit, to uh, help with it set up. It's a microphone and a stand and a couple of USB cables, and you plug it all into the uh, laptop, and you download the uh, relevant software. Versions were really important, by the way. Uh, microphone versions, software versions, and the software on the unit. Um, and then you could tune and equalize the room. Again, this this model could be, well, it's more than a decade old, um, and yet some of this technology was absolutely inspirational. So it was brilliant to have it, um, you know, relatively achievably uh, from a price point, you know, as far as being able to throw in your home. Nevertheless, look, the Paradigm Seismic 110, it represents some of the best engineering, some of the best performance, and it always puts a smile on my face when I'm using this in my home. So I thought I'd share it as part of a 25 year celebration. So there we have it, Paradigm's uh, Seismic 110 subwoofer, here at the Listening Post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.